So I'm researcher from Kison Research Group. Uh, I will talk about this project on dynamic data privacy, but actually I will talk only about location privacy. So here is the maps image from Dartmouth College. And there, some researchers developed a, a, app, a mobile app called Student Life. And this app collected sensor data from the accelerometer, the light sensor, the GPS, and, and from all more other sensors. So from this data, what they tried to do was to study the sleeping patterns, the conversation patterns obtained by the microphone in the telephones, the mobility patterns, and the activity of the students. So they studied 48 students during 10 weeks in the course. And the idea was to relate all of the sensor data with their mental health and educational outcomes. So here we have an example. We will only look at the GPS data. So we have an example of data from these five students. There are anonymous data. So we will call them violet, red, blue, uh, lilac, and green. So we can study, for example, from these points, from this cloud of points, we can study what are their points of interest. So we can obtain, for example, violet's points of interest, then red points of interest we can obtain, blue ones, the blue points of interest, lilac points of interest, and finally, the green points of interest. So here we have a map. We have a map of all these five students and their main points of interest in the university. What can we say about them? Are they anonymous? My first question. Are they really anonymous? So we know that green goes to Sudikov lab, for example, and also green goes to this library. Uh, but blue, blue also goes to the same library, yes, ah, no, the library and the Sudikov lab, but blue also likes going to the rowing boat house, so, see, so blue likes going rowing. What else can we say? Are they anonymous? For this red lives here, red lives in this building, Red goes to the library, also to the Sodikov lab, but red also goes to the medical sciences building and to some other places. Are they private? These, these points of interest are private. So, Violet, Violet goes here. Here is the Phi Tau Fraternity building. But Violet also goes here, that it's the medical building. So, is it private? Or, for example, Lilac. Lilac lives here, goes to the Sodikov lab. But what, what if Lilac had a point of interest just here, in the St. Thomas Episcopal Church? then we could infer with quite certainty that lilac is of some religion. Or other example, can we know if lilac, blue and red are friends? So lilac and red live in the same building. Uh, lilac and blue go to the same Sudikov lab. They also go to the medical sciences building and to the library and to some other places. Moreover, if we, if we know at what times they are in these places, then we might know when they meet, if they meet, or if they don't meet. 
So the question, what is our research question? How can we preserve their privacy, given this? We can decrease the precision. We can say, well, they are not here, but they are in these bigger circles. But still, here is the medical facility, here is the building, here is the rowing club, and actually these circles cover actual buildings, so we still know this. Okay, we can decrease more the precision, but it's still useful. I mean, how can we measure how useful it is and how private? Is it still private or not? How much more private it is? Other option, we can generate models. Actually, what, we, what we've done before, we took out all the GPS points that we have in the beginning and we obtain the points of interest. So this is like the first step of a model. The second step could be, after inferring the points of, infer of interest, their, their probabilities of moving from one to the other. So we could have a map of the university and the movement of students there. Actually, four points identify 95% of individuals. This was proven by MIT researchers, and they used 1.5 million sample of a European country using telephone data. So from all of this data that we have here, we could only use these points to identify the individuals. So this is another example of, as Vijay Panduragan says, improperly anonymized data. So he obtained, using the Freedom of Information Law, 173 million of New York City taxi trips. And why it was improperly anonymized? This data had the pick-up pick location, the drop-off location, the timestamps where, where the passengers get to the taxi when they go down, the place. And this also had the the license plates of the cars. And it was improperly anonymized because he could reverse the, the encoding of the license plates and obtain the real license plates of these cars. So three months later, uh, Anthony Tokar, another researcher, what he did was, OK, so we have the license plates and we have this data from the trips, taxi trips. So he looked for, for pictures of celebrities taking a taxi in Manhattan. And looking at the, uh, at the number, at the number of the car, he could find, actually, the trip in the data. And the thing like the, the surprising thing for the press was that the celebrities was not giving tips to the taxi drivers. <laughs> but even more, then what he did was, OK, we will look to the people that goes to a taxi in this data set from this bar after 12, 12 at night in this isolated bar. And then where are they going to after going out from the bar? And he obtained locations of, the, of points accumulated in some locations. He looked at some location. It was an address. He looked for the address, obtained the name of the people that was living in this address, and then look at social networks. Uh, looked at there was like their profile picture and more private information and then looked at some other trips that when arrived from outside to this address and found out that this person went to several bars with pink, pink light bars. Uh, so the last question is, we can, for example, we could measure transit with cars, with sensors in cars, but we should respect driver's privacy. So. We, if we want to measure the transit, we only need to know that there are two cars here in this crossroad, 
and how many cars are moving from this one to the other, how many cars are moving from one place to the other, but we actually don't need to know that the green goes from this and goes to this place. It doesn't matter if it was blue that was riding here or not, and it was green riding here or not. So just to conclude, we as a society will be benefited by more and more precise data, that's true, but it should have some limits, and the limit actually is individual privacy. Thank you. Thank you.